Right guys, Project Turbo LS, just trying out my new GoPro Pro camera here. So what you're seeing here is uh, lower control arms. So these are for an SN95, these are BMR units. So really super nice, uh, very rigid. And they're designed again for an SN95 Mustang. So since I uh, upgraded my brakes to the bare, bare 11 inch with 11 inch rotors, uh and i converted over to sn95 or 1994 to 2004 style spindles to get these brakes to work here on this 1984 thunderbird because they didn't make a brake kit aftermarket for the factory spindles that came with this uh, car um kind of an oddball year so 82 or 70 yeah 82 82 they had uh, a weird setup anyways these are the factory a arms and hopefully you can see that guys I think you can yeah so you can see up to this side's better so I'm gonna replace the lower a arms here with the nice BMR units and uh, a lot more rigid probably way better handling just a better overall road feel and everything like that and as you can see here there's the uh, the spindles SN95 hopefully you can see that Think you can just trying out the camera again also guys so as you can see there there's my uh i had to machine that little spacer there for the uh castellated nut to line up with the hole on the ball joint and put the uh, cotter pin through so i did that because again a little bit different configuration from the original all right guys so as you can see here we have our bare brakes installed 11 inch rotors slotted and uh, cross drilled so pretty nice uh worked out well using the sn95 96 uh steering knuckle uh had to buy a 96 uh, strut as you can see here so i got that to work and then also secondly i don't know if you guys can see this but there's a little spacer in there about 370 thou thick uh i had to use that so i could fasten the castle nut to the ball joint and the castellations would line up with the hole that's in there so i could put the cotter pin through i can actually show you on the other side might be a little easier yeah so as you guys can see there hopefully you can see that you can see that uh the ball joint uh stud sticking out there and uh, if I just use the castle castellation nut it would uh, not line up with that uh, hole in that hardened uh, ball joint stud so that's why I had to get uh, that spacer machined right there so that basically just puts the castellations at the right spot where the hole runs through the uh, stud there for the ball joint and uh, yeah makes everything nice and safe so we got our cotter pin through there and again uh, a little bit of screwing around with the uh, steering here i had to uh once you can see here we got our tie rod on there i had to clearance it a little bit because it's pretty close to the rotor I'm not sure if you can yeah there you go so i had to clearance that a little bit with the with the flapper wheel make uh, at least 200 thou whatever 100 200 thousands and i got this uh coupling nut machine which is welded to our uh, steering rack and of course we have threaded rod here also Lots of engagement goes into the tie rod about 100 and or 1.9 inches 1.8 inches so quite a bit i think the minimum spec on that is 800 or 875 it should go in there and everything's grade eight here so that's nice and uh yeah so the coupling on the other side is actually welded to our if you can see that welded to our uh, rack there so it's not coming out not moving so pretty solid and uh, 9 16 18 thread per inch. So that is considered special, but uh, it's hard to find a ready rod like that. So I had to use a, uh, a four and a half inch fastener and then just extend the threads to about four inches to give me enough length here for the proper length. So we got lots of engagement into the coupling that also it goes in there about 1.1 inches. And it's also 1.1 inches on the other side coming out of the steering rack and then welded to it. So pretty. Pretty stout, pretty strong. Hopefully we'll see what happens, but I think it's pretty good. And again, you saw in the earlier scenes, the steering knuckle and everything like that. Uh, caster camber plates are in there. Uh, I can probably show you guys. 
me just put this on pause. I'll drop the car because the geometry's all changed because I'm using, uh, you know, SN95, 96 uh, struts here versus the factory stuff right there. Totally different. It's kind of a one-off deal. Uh, 79 to 82 Thunderbird hot spindles and nobody makes an aftermarket brake system for them. So that's why I had to go, go this route here. Anyways, I'll just put on pause and uh, lower the car. Okay, so I lowered the car and here you can see the camber caster plates. These are QA1, so pretty nice uh, unit here, steel. So this is uh, what got me my perpendicularity on our rotor. So they're nice and uh, nice and perpendicular. So alignment probably pretty close, but we'll see. We, we were swap might still have to go in for an alignment. But anyways, they look pretty perpendicular if you look at them. So that's good. And that uh, the caster camber plates make that uh, pretty easy to do. So if you guys uh, are using a non-stock system with struts and everything like that, custom stuff, just get these cam camber caster plates. Uh, then you can get your alignment, perpendicularity, everything uh, pretty good just by eyeballing. And then using them, I used a level on there too, just to make sure. And it, they, it came out right in the center. So anyways, guys, I'm just going to uh, continue throwing this together. Just did the brakes. Uh, the brake lines are all in. Nothing leaks. I've checked. Uh, I've bled the brakes somewhat, but... Uh, Think they could probably be using another bleeding but I don't have anybody here to help so I will uh, maybe do that again with the uh, soft bleeder kit I got uh, we'll see but anyway so yeah so fluids in the calipers yeah, there is there's pretty good uh, brake pressure so I'll update you with some more scenes here uh, shortly but everything else works so I've got SN95 struts and of course uh, for the alignment and everything like that camera caster plates so that worked out well because my alignment's perfect now car is straight and again these are the bare brakes 11 inch four piston calipers so to make this work again I had to go with SN95 uh, spindles and I got a really good deal from eBay too bad the wheel wasn't off I could show you better but maybe I can go around this side I'll show you the, the disc brake there we go so there's the brakes the bears As you can see, this is a 15 inch rim. So I, so the rotor I used is 11 inch because I would fit. Uh, I probably should have went with a 13 inch rotor, but I'd have to get 17 inch rims, which I still might do. I might upgrade that. So we'll see how the car works. The brakes are broken in now, so I can really test it. So I just wanted to make a little update video because I haven't posted in a while. And then you can kind of see, well, hopefully you can see the, uh, yeah, so there's the, the strut. And, See, it's kind of dark anyways there's a strut in there and again nice rotors and we're going to be putting in our camera caster plates oh the camera caster plates are in there sorry but they, they, they also gave us a little space here so they kind of did exactly what i did they also have a machine spacer there that they supply with this you see that so it's almost probably almost exact same thickness that i machine there so that's the ball joint. Again, they gave me a new castellated nut, so that's nice. So, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so I'll update again once these things are installed and we'll do some more uh, videos. And here's the turbo off the van. For anybody, if anybody cares, the turbo on top of the roof. That's all removed, so now I'm just going to sell the van as is. Sitting in the back. I will advertise on eBay shortly. So, so again, just trying out the camera, 11 inch rotors, barrel brakes, four piston calipers. Had to do a lot of modification. Oh yeah, maybe I'll show you this too, guys. Uh, to get this uh, system to work, another thing I had to do is I had to get a, a coupling nut machined. I made that, that's this thing here, because using this rack that was in here, uh, designed for a 1980, Ford Thunderbird. The problem was the uh, the tie rod connections were were two inches too short, so I had to extend this. So that therefore I used this coupling nut to give me more length here. Because if I just left it the way it was, I only had two threads engagement into the tie rod right there. That's not enough. You need at least one point or point eight seven five, and I believe now I have one point five or one point seven. So that's lots of engagement. The threads go all the way up to here for safety. 
And uh, yeah, so I had, instead of replacing the whole rack, I just made it work. Coupling nut. Actually, I got a, a fastener. And my buddy, Tim, he single pointed the threads way longer. So that's a cheap way to do it because it didn't have any ready rod. And that was a 916 18, so it's a special thread. Fine thread for that. So that's what I had to do to make all this stuff work here. So now, again, the next step is I'm gonna uh, replace these whole lower control arms with a BMR unit, so that should be pretty nice. And everything in the distance from here to here is 13. And it's exactly what those other ones measure. So I was kind of worried about that, that they wouldn't fit, but it's exactly the same. So this is a Fox body, so everything really fits. So that's nice. So yeah, guys, so that's the, the next job. After I put that, uh, my dual fan in there, right here. So the single fan is good, but when I get into boost and power, we're gonna need a lot more cooling, especially on a hot day. So we're gonna be using this uh, unit and a Terminator X Max that controls one fan, two fans. The gray gray wire with the yellow stripe is for fan number one. And then the gray wire with the red stripe is designated fan two and you gotta use two relays to make each of them work just to, so you don't overload the electrical. Yeah, so I'll have two relay, I got one relay and let's put another one in there. And then it should work pretty good. And the Terminator X will be controlling that. So yeah, so there's a suspension update right here. So there we go. And again, for review, this is just a 7675 billet on three uh, turbocharger. So far, I haven't really gotten to boost, maybe three PSI the most. Uh, just everything breaking and everything slowly, not pushing anything, making sure everything's working as it should. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that and uh, try out the new GoPro guys. So anyways, Hopefully it recorded. I think it did. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Project Turbo LS. And by the way, this Mustang is for sale. 2012 Brembo package. I'll go. I'll show you the brakes. The 2012 Brembo package, full load, premium, five liter, four valve, whole bunch of mods. It's got the thousand uh, horsepower aluminum drive shaft. So that's super good because you have way less rotating mass, so it accelerates way quicker. It's got the rocket fish shifter cage, so no more miss shift under load with these things. Notorious. Uh, 401A interior. So that's the leather with the black stripe. I'm not sure if you can see that, maybe you can. Anyways, there we go. Yeah, leather with black stripe. So really full option car. It's got navigation, security, everything. It's it, in the first year, it was the hi most highly optioned Mustang you could buy. So yeah, so this one, 2012 Brembo package, uh, premium five liter. You see that? There you go. Yeah, so super nice car. So both these cars are Fox bodies. Mustang, and of course our Project Turbo LS right there. <laughs> Anyways guys, yeah, so this one's for sale. It's on, it's on eBay if you're interested. So, uh, so yeah. That's what's going on right now. So update video, because I haven't posted in a while. Uh, yeah, so I just got these today. Fans going in maybe tomorrow, so I can test it out on Wednesday. So again, I just got to add, there's one relay there that controls a single fan now. And I want to have duals. So and I think there's room. I already measured, so. Should be good, guys. Anyways, I'll update further once we get in there. But uh, again, guys, appreciate uh, the support and uh, Thanks for watching.